Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution to the problem named Peculiar Movie Preferences taken from today's Code Forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which uses many caseworks and an observation about palindromes and it does not use any advanced uh, techniques other than a multi-set data structure and even that is not uh, advanced at all. So you basically need to be able to make an observation and use some casework in order to understand my solution. So in this problem we are basically given an array of n strings where each string has a length at most 3 and we need to figure out whether or not there is an awesome subsequence present in the array and a subsequence is awesome if, if it is not empty and the concatenation of the strings in that subsequence is a palindrome. So for example, if you consider z, x, a, b, c, c, z, x and b, a, then clearly a, b plus b, a will give you a, b, b, a, which is a palindromic subsequence and that's why you will print yes. And other possibility is c, c itself. So the subsequence can be of length 1 and c, c itself is palindromic. So we will print yes. And if you consider another example where you have a, b, b, a, d, then in that case you can uh, you can verify that for all the subsequences. Uh, there is no awesome subsequence because none of them will become palindromic. And for the next example, um, you can verify that c, o, o, r, c is not palindromic, so there is no palindromic subsequence. And uh, that's why we print yes. And then for the next two we print no. And for the next example, clearly each string of length 1 is palindromic. That's why we will print yes. And for the second last example, if you combine AB and CBA, you will get a palindromic subsequence. So we will print yes, the subsequence is 1, 3. And in the last example, there is no palindromic subsequence. So we will print no. In general, we can break down the problem into multiple cases. There are four cases to be specific. So let's look at each of these four cases and then we can use a multi shared data structure to efficiently check each of these cases. So the first case is when the string itself is a palindrome. So if there exists some i such that ai is a palindrome, then this means that we can just use a subsequence of a one length of length one containing only i and this means that we can just um, print this uh, subsequence and so we will just print yes. So if there is any such i where a is a palindrome, we will print yes. The second case is in when we basically, uh, let's consider the example where we choose some subsequence, some string abc and we have the exact reverse of the string cba. So if this condition is met, or you could take another example where you have some string like ba and ab is there then we can just concatenate we can just concatenate these two strings together to form a palindromic subsequence or an awesome subsequence so if there exists i and g such that ei and aj are reverses of each other then we know that or we can concatenate i and j together and uh, basically the subsequence is uh, i comma j in whichever order you want like it could either be yeah so it's where i is less than j so either way if you concatenate uh, j first and then i even that does not matter because cba and then abc will give you a interesting subsequence this is palindromic and even if you reverse the palindrome, it will still be a palindrome. That's why the subsequence is i, j, where i is less than j. It does not matter which one is the reverse and which one is the original. So these are the first two cases, which are the simple cases. Now the next two cases are a bit tricky and you will need to consider um, various examples to verify that these are the only two cases left. So let's first try to take a string of length 2. We know that there's a, if there is a string of length 1, then it falls under the first category because it will be a palindrome. If there is a string of length 2, which is not a palindrome, so if it's a palindrome, it falls under case 1. 
if it's not a palindrome then it can either be formed with the reverse which forms under case 2 or there is a special case when it can actually um, be formed in, in a different way so the way in which it can be formed is like this so if there is an AB and then there is a CBA this is the case which I am talking about so this is one possibility another possibility so this is when there is a string of line 2 so let's just consider all strings of line 2 and let's try to figure out whether there is an awesome subsequence which contains that string of line 2 if it contains the string of line 2 then it should either be a palindrome or it should contain the reverse or it should be a string of line 2 plus a string of line 3 that's why this is the only case left and there is a fourth case where you consider strings of length 3 so if you consider a string of length 3 then basically um, if you consider a string of length 3 it can either be a palindrome or it can contain its reverse that falls under case 1 and case 2 and if it does not contain a reverse and if it is not a palindrome then we know that um, basically there should be a string of length uh, 2 so the string of length 2 can be something like this BA so this is the last case so you should try and understand why only these four cases are possible for forming a palindromic subsequence and why only two strings are required to be concatenated together in a palindromic subsequence uh, why at max two are required so uh, the reason why that holds true is because if you consider all possible lengths if it's a length one then it falls under case one if it's a length two then either it falls under case two or there is a string of length 2 followed by a string of length 3 and similarly if you consider length 3 either it falls under case 1 or case 2 or there is a opposite string of length 2 now we know how to check case 1 we can check case 1 in O of n by just iterating through all the elements and checking whether it's a palindrome or not so this takes O of n into C time which is O of n essentially the second case takes O of n log n time, I will explain how we can do that using a multi set. Um, using a multi set, so I'll be explaining a bit later how we can do that. Um, in, in the code part, I'll show you how we can do it using a multi set. Basically, we store the prefix and the suffix strings, and I'll show you that in the code. So, if you uh, want to check whether, so let's say you're at a position i and you want to check whether a position j exists such that j is the reverse of i. So in that case, you just maintain a multiset of the suffix strings. So you ma maintain a multiset for all j greater than i. And um, basically, i is less than j. And for all j greater than i, you maintain all the strings in the multiset. And each time, you keep removing the current element from the multiset when you're in the loop. And that way, you know that the multiset contains the suffix. So uh, since the multiset contains the suffix and it contains only elements greater than i, we just need to check whether the reverse of i exists in the multiset and um, if you want more clarity just uh, uh, wait till the code part the interesting uh, thing comes in how we can handle case 3 and case 4 so in order to handle case 3 and case 4 we need to use some clever ideas so we will actually try and use a similar idea to case 2 in case 2 we use the multiset right uh, basically we use a multiset to store the suffixes to handle case 3, we again use a multiset, but we use a multiset to store the prefixes. So let's store prefix of i is the multiset which stores uh, which stores a of 0, a of 1, and all the way up till a of i, a of i minus 1 actually. So prefix of i stores this, and obviously suffix of i will store. Um, from the definition of suffix of i it will store the multi set it will store basically a i plus 1 a i plus 2 all the way up till a n minus 1 and for case 2 for verifying case 2 you can just use the fact that um, if if um, suffix of i dot count um, the reverse of e i dot reverse of e i then we can then we know that uh, we'll just print true because we know that the reverse of ai exists uh, in the suffix so this means that um, the reverse exists in the array so we will print true in that case so this will be essentially case 2 and this is the multi set idea 
and we extend that multiset idea for case 3. So in case 3, we store prefix of i to be the multiset for a0, a1, all the way up till ai minus 1. And the key idea is that in order to verify whether there is a string of length 2 before the string of length 3, so currently i represents the string of length 3, this is what i is, and we want to check whether there is some string before it which is of length 2. So we will just check if prefix dot contains the reverse of this element. So basically the previous string is equal to the reverse of a of i of 1 to a of i of 2. So if you consider the substring from 1 to 2, if you reverse that, you will get the desired prefix and that's why if prefix dot contains, if prefix of i dot contains or dot count the reverse of the substring from 1 to 2. So we are assuming the length of i is 3 and if prefix of i dot contains this, this means that we will print true because we know that there exists a string of length 2 followed by a string of length 3. The string of length 3 is the current string i and the string of length 2 is basically the reverse of the string of length 3 with the last two characters. So that's the idea behind case 3. And for case 2, we use a similar thing, but we basically consider only the suffix uh, because um, we just need to check whether there's a future string of length 2. So if suffix of i dot, con dot count the reverse of the first two characters of the current string of length 3, then this means that we will print true because we know that by reversing the first two characters we get ba and we know that ba occurs in the uh, occurs as a suffix somewhere ahead in the uh, array of strings and these are the basically uh, the four cases which we will consider and note that whenever we are updating the prefix multiset and the suffix multiset we can uh, we can remove the ith element from the prefix after the iteration and we can remove the ith element from the suffix before the iteration. So I'll show you that in the code. And um, that's basically the full idea. Now I'll show you the code implementing it. So in the code for each test case, I take in the value of n and I store the strings, the n strings in the array a. And you can read this comment about what pre and what suff stores. Prefix is the multiset of strings occurring before position i. Suffix is the multiset of strings occurring after position i and you can consider an example to understand it better. So initially we remove um, from pre and from suff the string i because we know that suff stores a i plus 1 to a n minus 1 and pre stores a 0 to a i minus 1. Now there are four basic cases. This is actually case 2. Case 2 is when the reverse of a i exists somewhere in the suffix. Uh, so we can do that using a multiset we can store the current value to be ai, we can reverse it and if suffix dot count needed, we will print yes. Then the first case is in which ai is a palindrome. So ai will be a palindrome if it's of length 1 or if it's of length 2 and the first two characters are equal to each other or if it's of length 3, then the first character should be equal to the last character. In that case, we will print yes. So that's case 1 and case 2. You should understand case 2 well, especially because it uses the multiset idea, which is again used in case 3 and case 4. So in case 3, we have a string of length 2, which occurs before i and string of length 3, which is at i. So remember that i is the string of length 3. And in case 3, we need a j, which appears before i. That's why we access the pre of i, which represents the multiset before i. So the needed value is the substring from 1 to 2, which is basically BA and you reverse it to get AB and you will check if AB is there in the prefix. If that is there, then we will print yes and we will just break. And the final case 4 is in which the current value is the string of length 3 and um, we want to check if there exists a future substring of length 2, which is uh, basically like uh, ahead of it and which is the reverse of the first two characters. So we will take CB, we will reverse it 
to get BC and in this case it will be a pile row. So the needed will be AI dot substring 0 up till 1. So the length of the substring is 2 and we will reverse it and if suf dot counts needed we will print yes and uh, we will basically break out. So these are the four cases. Case 1 is in which uh, case 1 is in which it's a pile row. So that takes care of the case when the string is of length 1. If the string is of length 2 or length 3 then it falls under case 2, case 3 or case 4. Case 2 is basically when the reverse exists in the in the string, uh, I mean in the array. Case 3 and case 4 is in which you consider strings of length 2 plus string of length 3 and you can verify that um, these are the only 4 cases and I'll just submit this code to see that uh, it gets accepted. So my code gets accepted. Uh, there was a small problem in updating the pre-multi set. So initially pre does not contain any elements and after we process the loop we need to add p to the multi set. We need to add the ith element to the multi set after we process the ith element. So that's an important mistake which you can make and um, then it gets accepted by basically erasing um, the so initially we will contain all the elements in the suffix and we will contain no elements in the prefix. Then repeatedly we will remove the element i from the suffix and we will add the element i to the prefix. So this way we will accurately maintain pre of i and suff of i and then the code gets accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.